Thanks for joining me today. This is Jen Lee with Gentastic Journey and this includes card crafting. Today we're going to make a gorgeous card for when you need a masculine card and we can choose colors of teams. We can choose their favorite colors, but this is just a great card. So I am using a five by seven card base folding it with my bone folder. And I've got a bunch of different dies here that I can use. And this is mostly to let you know that there's lots of options for you. You can use a die sentiment, die letters, you can create your own and fussy cut them out. So this is a mat that I'm using and I'll list all my tools in the description box below. But I'm going to use some geometric shapes and this is how I organize my stamps right now. Although I'm moving to a new technique and you'll see a video about that coming up soon. But I want to just pick out a bunch of different geometric type shapes so that we could just add a little bit of noise to my card front. So I do have a separate card front from my card base. We're going to just make this just whatever you have. If you don't have a lot of this, you could use whatever you have to make just some noise and put some color on this card front. So I'm just showing you a few of the ones that I think might have a good option for us just to put interest on here. I'm using my stamping platform and I either can use my magnets or I can use my sticky mat. I put both on here and I'm just going to put some of these stamps randomly around. Now you could certainly, if you had more time, you could use the same stamp and just put it on different places throughout the card. I kind of wanted to just get some color down and I am using my Stampin' Up stamp pad and you could see here I had one that was flipped over the wrong way so we'll retry that one <laughs> and do it again. I try not to cut out too many of my errors because I think it helps when you guys see some of the things that I do that sometimes are silly, but um, certainly if you put your stamps on backwards, they will stamp funny. So I'm glad I caught it before it did that. I am using pumpkin pie and blueberry bushel because this is for my oldest son for his birthday and he loves the bears. So orange and blue for the bears. We live in Wisconsin, so we're Packers fans, but I have to support all my kids and their different loves of different sports. And the bears mostly grew up in Illinois, and so we'll make this a fun bears card. I'm just putting some color throughout. I have a block out with a silicone stamp, clear stamp, and I'm just putting some additional color because it didn't have enough color before when I did the background stamps, but this is perfect because that's what I wanted to do. This airless mister, I thought it would be kind of just shiny, but it did have a lot of yellow in it. So I do end up mopping it up a little bit. I didn't want to add another color to this because I do want this to be kind of a bear's card. I'm going to map this up a little bit and it still gives it a little bit of sparkle. It's a cosmic shimmer airless mister and it had just a shimmery color in it, but I think it might be plugged a little bit, so I'll take a look at that. Then I'm going to dry this a little bit because it did have a lot of ink on it and I don't want to be smearing ink around. I could have also put some embossing powder on there if I wanted to keep it, but I'm going to use this happy birthday dye and I'm just going to put this down with some removable tape. This is removable scotch tape and we're going to die cut this out. And then I took off all the pieces and I put them on some press and seal just so that I didn't lose any of the inner pieces. You want to make sure you have all those little, like the center of the A and the centers of the P's and all of those little pieces. And then I cut out some foam. And if you don't have foam, you can just cut this out multiple times on thick pieces of cardstock and layer it up. But I had this foam that I wanted to use and that just helps me. So I only have to die cut this out in foam once and it cut out beautifully. If you go too thick, sometimes it doesn't cut out as beautifully, but this seems to be a good weight. And I believe it's three millimeter. I will certainly put that in the description box as well. I took out some orange and blue paper and we're gonna use as, a, as some matting layers. And then I'm cutting about a half an inch off of my card front because I'm going to have two matting layers. So I'm gonna to wanna to have quite a bit of an amount cut off. And then with the blue and the orange color, I also trimmed those down so that the blue would be in the middle and then we would have the happy birthday on top of the blue. So I'm using my Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue. This glue doesn't dry quite as fast as my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. That just gives me an opportunity to move it around a little bit till I get it perfectly aligned where I want. Now I'm going to take these foam pieces and I'm going to glue them on. And I started off with the Ranger glue, but the foam didn't love this Ranger glue. So I did end up fixing it later with some Barely Art glue. It just seemed to adhere better. And some things don't take to certain glues. That's not a problem. We could switch gears and keep moving. And this is the birthday and I'm doing the same thing. Just putting some glue on there and then pushing it down onto that blue background. 
All right, and then I'm going to take out my Barely Art Precision Craft glue because these are going to be some precise innards. So the A and the P's, all the little pieces that go inside. So you want to push those in and I'm just using the paper. I'm not using foam for this because we want the rest of the letters to be pushed out and those inner pieces to be in. We'll just put all these little bitty pieces and this is why I use my press and seal because then it doesn't let me lose any of these little teeny tiny pieces to the birthday especially. That word is some of those little pieces are very tiny and we want to make sure we get them all in. I have this pretty sped up just because you guys get the idea that we're just going to put all these little pieces in there and make sure we didn't miss anything. I have a couple pieces left over so I'm like where do they belong? And I found them though. I'm going to push this down for a few minutes with a lock, make sure it got nice and dry and then I'm going to glue the tops of the happy birthday although I thought that looked really cool. <laughs> so I sat there for a second and was like wow that looks actually really pretty that way. And then we're going to take each of the letters and we're going to glue it to the foam and that's going to give this 3D effect and I'm going to show you how I do the rest of this but I'm going to speed it up pretty quickly and I put the block on there just so that I could keep it moving along and nothing would dry funny while I was working on the rest of it. So I kind of worked from the left corner and then worked to the right quarter to the center. And then I'll work on the birthday piece below, which is all one piece. So this one's a lot easier and it's not difficult to do this because you've cut out this word anyway. So everything lines up perfectly and looks really nice. It is a pretty busy background. So you'll find out later on that I actually made a few changes at the end. You could keep it like this. It looks very nice. And when it's not on camera, it actually looks a little bit livelier. So I'm going to put some sentiments on the inside of this card. I always use my memento ink when I'm doing any sort of stamping with words because it is such a crisp image that I can't really beat it. So I don't really like to use other inks. I'm also then going to put a little bit of what I did on the outside onto the inside with my pumpkin pie stampin' up stamp pad. I'm going to put something in either corner. It's different corners than I usually do and I don't know why I did this because I usually sign at the bottom right, write the person's name at the top left but that's where I decided to put some ink today, which is just different. Who knows what we, why we do what we do. And it's the same stamp. I just decided to put the two different colors on there and I think that ties it all together nicely. I like when I put something on the inside that matches the outside of the card. Time to assemble the card. And in just a minute, I will show you what I ended up doing with the envelope as well, as I really like to decorate the envelopes when I can. And this is a standard five by seven card, so I do have an envelope, so I'm not gonna make an envelope, but I like to decorate the envelope if I'm not going to do that. Please don't forget to like if you enjoyed this content and also hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. On to this envelope and you're going to see here quickly I'm going to make an error. I have a lot of ink on this block and I made an error by getting some ink from that outline on the front but it's such an abstract bunch of shapes. They're supposed to look kind of like splattered paint so I just didn't sweat it and I left it there and I don't think anybody's even going to notice. So again, just using those same two colors, we're going to put a little bit of interest on the outside of the envelope. Again, just ties everything together. And I think that's a lot of the fun of card making is we get to make things just all tie together, unlike you can do when you buy a card at the store. So here we go, the two items. Just a quick look. Here's where I ended up putting some glittery stickles on the happy and the birthday. Before that, I ran a pen along the shapes and it just allowed it to stand out a little bit more. You certainly don't have to do that, but you can add whatever you'd like. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's been a blast making cards with you. I'll see you in the next video.